Welcome back to my series about some of the best adventures that can be had in North Wales. If you're just joining me, I've already explored the stunning Bodnant Gardens with its swathes of colour and gushing streams. I've hit the hiking trails, starting with a gentle circular amble around Aberglaslin, Llindanath and Coombachan. And in the last episode, conquered the epic Glidders. Hiking up Devil's Kitchen, reaching Glidervor first and later Glidervach with its cantilevered stone. To give our muscles a well-deserved rest, Today, we'll be undertaking a road trip around the Isle of Anglesey, going in search of an abandoned copper mine, an old coastal brickworks, and Lanthwin's lighthouse. If during the video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so that you can join me in my North Wales adventures. Good morning and welcome to Anglesey here in North Wales. I'm here in front of the Manai Suspension Bridge which was built in 1826. At that time it was the largest suspension bridge in the world and for the local farmers they were really grateful for its creation because up until that point they were having to wait for the water levels to drop really really low and then try and coax their livestock to cross the waters. We have come along as our second stop to Paris Mountain, which was used in history as a huge copper mining site. The mine here at Paris Mountain initially had been tunnelled mines, however, quite a few of them collapsed causing casualties and fatalities. So it was then decided to turn it into the open cast mine that we can see now. It was done in a time in history when the workers used only pickaxes, gunpowder and shovels to be able to create what we can see today. Pretty impressive. The ruined buildings behind me are what's left of the Mona mine yard. It was here where the mine had their offices, but they also had a store where the miners could come to purchase their tools, candles, and also explosives. Some of the miners would come together into small groups and they would go there for auction in order to be able to bid on what were known as bargains. And if they were successful, it allowed them access into some of the tunneled parts of the mine. From afar I thought that all of those piles of black, well I thought that they were black bin liners and that someone had just fly tipped, but actually it turns out that they're the slags. In 1819, the Pearl Engine House was built to house a Cornish beam engine. It was used to pump water up from the nearby shaft, also named the Pearl Shaft. The windmill was built in 1878 and it also was used to pump up water from the underlying mine. What made this windmill quite unique is that instead of the normal four sails on it, this one originally had five. Mm -hmm. 
made it back to the car park and after having hiked the two or so mile round trip loop I've been trying to put my finger on it the whole way around of what this reminds me of and I've realised it's a little bit of a cross between both Iceland and Yellowstone National Park. Obviously there's no geyser activity and we certainly don't have any bison or anything walking past. It is really really stunning and like nothing else that I've really come across in the UK before. So in the fact that it's completely free to access, if you're in this area I'd highly recommend popping along for a visit. The next port of call is a place called Porth Wen, which I believe is like a rocky beach. It's in a cove, and I think that it's got some beautiful ruined buildings from a historical past where there was like engineering that went on here. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> this is amazing. This is an old brickworks and it turned out that it stopped operation when the First World War broke out and when the war was over it never resumed business again which is why it's in the dilapidated state that it's in. It is quite a feast for the senses when it comes to an artistic point of view so if you're into photography or videography it's absolutely beautiful to come down here and there's plenty of other people who come down either because they're walking dogs, we've seen kayakers, people who've been paddling in the water, we've got some people fishing, there's people just sat around having a picnic taking in the scenery. It is really beautiful down here. I don't think that the tourism board has promoted this overly much in part I think because the parking situation up at the top isn't great. We actually parked on the lay by out by the main road because it wasn't too much longer to walk up from it along a, a single track road where no one was really using it except for cars just getting up to that parking area and then it was quite muddy and it is quite steep to get down to this point so I think it's, it's not the best maintained but for what you can gain if you manage to persevere and get yourself down here it is very very pretty. along to the South Stack Lighthouse at the far end of Anglesey. We've parked up at the RSPB's car park who very kindly have given us two hours of free parking. We went over to the parking machine fully expecting to pay and the ticket said nope two hours it's fine just stick it on your dashboard. And that's giving us plenty of time to be able to have a wander down to the cliff edges ish and you can probably hear that you've just got the sound of all of the seabirds. Spring is a wonderful time to come along because they will come up to the sea cliffs to nest and look after their new baby chicks and then obviously in the background you've got the South Stack Lighthouse. We've seen people going up and down the stairs just a little bit further over but because we've not been able to see anyone go onto the island something tells us that the lighthouse is shut at the moment so I think I'll be giving those 400 steps a miss today. The next spot that we've come along to is Nubra Forest and it's a forest that goes right down to the water where there is a beautiful beach and potentially some lighthouses. We have come across this board, but there's loads and loads of different trails. We are about here. We really want to get down to here where you've got the lighthouse and we can see that there is a red route which looking here it's called the Red Squirrel Walk. Most of our red squirrels in this country have been wiped out by the more common now American grey squirrel but in this area groups have worked really really hard to try and reinstate red squirrels and I do believe that back in like 1997 there were only about 40 of them and there's hundreds now so we'll definitely go off on that trail and fingers crossed we get lucky and we get to see red squirrel. So according to the map, 
it looks a lot closer than what it actually is. We've just seen through the trees over here the first of the three lighthouses that are all quite clustered together. It's a lot further than what I was first thinking. Whilst the walk was longer than anticipated, it was gorgeous from start to end, walking amongst the trees, keeping our eyes peeled for the elusive red squirrel. Eventually, the trail led us to the top of the beachback dunes, affording us stunning panoramic views with the towering mountains of Snowdonia National Park off in the distance. The trail down to the beach gave a clear line of sight of where to head, along the expansive sands where we watched on as other beachgoers took in the last of the sun's rays. As the ground underfoot changed from sand to crushed seashells and onto a boardwalk, we'd made it onto the island. By this point we were entering into golden hour and the scenery became even more beautiful with coastal birds and pretty flowers basking in the evening sun. We made it out to the point that we were hoping to get to. I personally think it's actually a church rather than a lighthouse. Andy on the other hand seems to think that it's more of a lighthouse than a church. But as the story goes, the Welsh patron saint of lovers fled to this island and this building behind me was its home as her true love was turned to stone and through the heartbreak she decided to flee to this island. I feel like we've perhaps got here at just the right time because this warm glow of the sun as it's just starting to go down in the early evening is making this truly spectacular. I think out of all of the places that we visited on the island today, this has got to be my favourite. I think we're done here now. What I would say is that if you also want to get out for a golden glow or a bit of a sunset, don't leave it too late. The walk to get from the car park out here is a lot longer than what we certainly realised and also it's quite slow going getting from the park's entrance down to the car park just because it is technically speaking a one lane road but the queues of vehicles trying to get out I think after having spent the day at the beach was quite long and so it was very slow going for us to try and get down to the car park so that would be my number one tip if you also want to come for the sunset get here nice and early we've just come up off the beach as we're gonna try attempt number two walking through the woods to see if we can see one of the red squirrels and it's reminded me that when we got to this point there were about maybe eight or nine cars parked up and the only way in which you can get to this car park is through a gate that's locked. We have no idea who are the chosen few who get the keys. So I'd love to know if anyone who's watching this knows who gets a key to be able to get a car parking space that's a little bit closer to that point. Please do let me know in the comments down below. And our final stop here on the island of Anglesey is this place, which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. It's 63 characters long. It is the longest place name in Europe, but believe it or not, it's not the longest place name in the world. That accolade goes to a place in New Zealand that has 85 characters in its name. It turns out that the local businesses and some civic leaders were trying to come up with ways of how they could attract people to this area on the island and one of the ways in which they achieved that was by coming up with the longest place name going. Sadly we've come so late in the day most things are closed so I can understand why it would bring people in and I think had we managed to make it earlier on in the day we probably would have gone and used some of the local businesses.